Hi, this is Chris, KF7P, and today's video is all about ferrite. So how do I properly use ferrite material, and what types do I use in what situations? Well, there's lots of good online resources that'll teach you how to use this stuff. The first I'm going to show you is the RFI book. It's published by the ARRL. RFI book, Practical Cures for Radio Frequency Interference. This is a really good resource, and every ham should have one. The next source is a paper written by Chuck W1HIS. It's called Common Mode Chokes. This also goes through lots of practical examples on how to use ferrite. And then one of the most important guides that a ham could have is called A Ham's Guide to RFI, Ferrites Balance, and Audio Interfacing, and it's by K9YC. This is almost the Bible on how to use ferrite. Pay particular attention to Chapter 7 where Jim goes through his choke cookbook and describes how to make chokes for any situation. Now I want to show you some practical examples of how I've used ferrite in my own shack and my own house and how it's mitigated some of the RFI problems I've had. First is with this secondary monitor I have in my shack. It used to create a lot of buzz that I could hear through my headphones when I was uh, on the radio listening on the bands and I was able to take care of the noise that was getting from the computer into my radio by wrapping the cord of the monitor around a ferrite clamp on it, a small Mix 31 clamp on. Here's how I was able to take care of some RFI that was getting into a neighbor's stereo. I just wrapped the speaker wire of the stereo around some ferrite beads, uh, a couple in a row, and that took care of it. Just about everybody's shack these days has a computer that's tied directly into their radio, and it's usually done through a USB cable. This is a great way for RFI to get into the computer and vice versa. And it's also a fairly easy fix by wrapping that USB cable around some ferrite. The clamp-on ferrites are really nice in this situation because they allow you to wrap the cord around the ferrite without having to disconnect either end of the cable. Any exposed appliance cord, even the short cord on a mouse, can pick up RFI and cause all kinds of havoc. This was the mouse on my wife's computer that I was able to take care of some RFI issues by just wrapping the cord around a toroid. Ethernet is a notorious polluter of the radio spectrum, but I was able to get some relief by wrapping the Ethernet cable that fed internet to my computer around some ferrite. Eventually I was able to take care of all the interference by going away from a wired connection and doing wireless connections to my computer. And yes, even my wife's sewing machine has been the victim of my nefarious ham radio activities. Every time I would transmit, the sewing machine would start to run by itself. So I cured this by putting a small Mix 31 clamp on on the power cord and that pretty much took care of it. Building a choke that goes right at the feed point of your antenna is probably one of the most important uses for ferrite. Here's an example of a choke I built for a two element 40 meter beam that's on my tower using a stack of five Mix 31 ferrite toroids. Using the guide in K9YC's choke cookbook, I was able to build a choke with several thousand ohms of choking impedance, which is exactly what you want. Over the years, I've also had some issues with my transmitting, getting into the TV and the stereo and the DVD player. And a lot of this has to do with the close proximity of the antennas to the family room where the TV and the stereo are located. But I was able to take care of most of the problems by wrapping the cables that interconnect the TV and the DVD player and the stereo with some ferrite. It takes a lot of experimenting and it's just trial and error. So one day I was in the middle of a QSO with a DX station and my wife was on the phone in the other room. She came into the shack and said, Chris, you're coming through the phone! So I had to take care of that in a hurry. I was able to wrap the line-in cord of the phone around a ferrite toroid a few times and also added one to the handset cord and that took care of the interference that I was getting on 20 meters. So your attention span is probably up at this point and so is this video. So let me leave a few parting tips regarding the use of ferrites. First, the publications we discussed earlier are fantastic. They'll give you all the information you need Follow those guidelines as closely as you can. Also remember that when you're building a choke, the more impedance you have, the better. You definitely want it above 1,000 ohms choking impedance, preferably up in the neighborhood of 3, 4, or 5,000 ohm. 
As explained in the K9YC guide and in W1HIS's work, it's very important that you're wrapping turns of your cable through the ferrite several times. When you're building a choke, remember that the impedance goes up by the square of the number of turns that are going through the center of the choke. So you can see that you're really increasing your impedance quickly by wrapping turns through the choke. Finally, remember that any length of wire can act as an antenna and pick up RF energy and conduct that energy into an appliance and cause problems. So there may be multiple ways that the RFI is getting into your problem appliance.